Hello, welcome to Think Tech. I'm Crystal on Quok Talk. Today, happy morning Tuesday. We're going to be talking about some healthy shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean by that? We're going to talk about super moms. Super moms talking about super strength. Now, what does it mean to be super strong? Well, I've got two amazing guests here who are super moms, but are super in their own area. So I'm going to introduce them right now. Next to me is the lovely Joyce Lee, Hello. all the way from Hong Kong, singer, songwriter. I've known Joyce for years. She happens yep. to be visiting and She's pregnant, if you can't see, with number three. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can model everything <laughs> there. This way. <laughs> Yay. And next here is Richie. Richie Kelts is a really interesting woman. I've never met a fire woman before. Is that cool? Or what? Yeah, that's my first. Right? Yeah, you're my first. Captain <laughs> of the Honolulu Fire Department. Welcome, Richie. Thank you. Thank you. And you have five kids. Is that um, right? Well, no. okay, okay, clarify. Yeah, yours is a little bit interesting. Mm -hmm. I have I, get, I have three naturally born children and four stepkids. Four! Oh my God, so, so that's total seven. Eight, seven. seven. <laughs> you can't <laughs> add. It's morning. <laughs> <laughs> you be quiet. <laughs> right, that's what happens though. You lose brain cells when you have too many kids, right? Yeah. Is, that, is that normal? I think you, you forget is things. It? Yeah. Yeah, I forget things yeah. easily. have to write things down. Or is down. that an excuse because you're pregnant right now? Well, of course, I use that as, as an excuse, <laughs> <laughs> okay. so no one will blame me. So Richie, again, go a little bit backwards. Now, why do you have so many kids, and how did you bring them up? Well, when my youngest at the time was was like one years old, I met my husband, and then, and I had a, how old was, my son was 14, and he had, my ex-husband now had four kids, so we ra raised them together. So I had, and then my daughter was born. So my oldest is 18 and my youngest is 16 now. So he was, no, no, my oldest is 34. My youngest <laughs> is 16. So he, he um, was 18 when my youngest was born. And so, and then there were four kids in between. Mm -hmm. And, and there, t every two years. So um, how old, we, Clarissa was seven, was seven at the time. I, f I forget what age. Mm. So basically they're all young school age when I was helping raise him with my ex-husband. Did you have help? I mean, that's how, how did His you His mother was it? helping, yeah. And we also worked oppo opposite shifts as a firefighter. We worked 24 hours. So your husband was a firefighter yes. too? Yes, yes. Wow. So he would work one shift, I would work another. Oh, and wow. so we would, al there would always be somebody home. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. So you were mentioning right. off air that you were actually pregnant twice when you're still a firefighter. Yes, yes. How can you work as a firefighter um, when you're pregnant? Back, back in, that time, I kind of didn't tell anybody mm. until I was. <gasps> really. So you're bursting out of your suit. Mm. Yeah, almost. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think I told when I was five months mm -hmm. the first one, and then no, well, five months both times. Mm -hmm. Why and is that? Because it's kind of like a man's job, and you didn't want to get mm, into. I just didn't want them to baby me. Oh. You know how how pregnant are you? Yeah, how many months? I'm are you? about six months. Okay, see. Yeah. And but I'm tall, so I could kind of hide it more. Right, right, right. And I just didn't say anything. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I, you know, people are probably going to say, "Oh, I should have said something," but no. Mm -hmm. At that time, I, I felt like I could do it, and I did. I right. fought fires. Was there a certain time that you had to stop? At it? six months, I decided to stop, only mm -hmm. because uh, when you fight fires, especially brush brush fires, you're breathing smoke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think? <laughs> That's a little dangerous. A little bit. Yeah, but I don't know. I. I you know, at six months you're strong still, right? Mm. I'm sure you're working out and swimming or whatever Joyce? you do. Yeah, I do it for exercise. Swim. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's the easiest ones, like, you know, right. not hard on your body. You know, Joyce being in Asia is actually a very different lifestyle and concept with the concept of strength, right? Yeah, yeah. you want to yeah. talk a little bit about that? Well, in, in Asia, it's very different. Like, you know, I really look up to you. I mean, in Asia, especially in Hong Kong, if you're pregnant, then people are like, okay, don't move. Yeah, you don't do anything. You know, don't walk, watch out. You know, everything's uh -huh. so careful, you know. And I'm like, come on, you know, it's like, it's not that bad. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a different culture. But isn't it more of a modern culture f for you not to be doing anything? I'm sure in the no. olden days, women did stuff on until they went into the bushes and popped it out. I don't know. Yeah, so, but it's, so it's different, right? <laughs> it depends what kind of class you're in, I guess. You're that's either the true. person helping somebody who's lying down or... That's true, right? that's true. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's good to be strong and pregnant at the same time mm -hmm. because you don't want to be, you know, right. so weak and you can't do things for yourself. Yeah. You know? And strength, you can, you know, break it down to many different categories. So we're talking about the obvious, uh, you know, physical strength that mm -hmm. you need as a firefighter. Um, 
what do, you know, mental strength is something that they always say. I don't want to be too gender biased, but are, do you think women are stronger mentally than men? Let's just put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> know it. Her eyes. you know it. <laughs> See? <laughs> Right. I think women are stronger. We live longer. And yeah, I, and I think because physically we have to have, we, we give birth to the children a lot of times, yeah. you know, if there aren't any husbands or men around or they are making money, you got to take care of them, mm -hmm. right? I mean, take care of your children, I'm saying. So you have to be strong to take care of your children yeah. and be pregnant at the same yeah. time. Exactly. To give birth it requires exactly. a lot of strength, yeah. too. Yeah, and multitasking. I think women yes. are very, yes. very strong at that, doing yes. that. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Men cannot do two things at the same things. time. That's exactly. a fact. But you know, going back to the firefighting, I mean, it's really fascinating. Have you ever had to go and rescue some men who are, look stronger than you and they're like, what's this? You know, do they, do they approach you in a different way? Um, for work-wise, no, I never, no? other than in training to rescue. And you know, cause we have intense training where we're rescuing each other just in case we have to do it for real. And um, I, I believe that men have different types of strength. They have more upper body right. strength. So we have to adjust on how we would uh, work in that same environment. Mm -hmm. um, we use our legs more, I believe, oh, mm -hmm. you know. Right. But, no, I lost track of your question. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No, but it is. You know, you yeah. think about physical strength. And, you know, in, in the Army, with the new regulations saying it's all equal and women can go out to the front line, um, is it, do you think that's something that makes sense? because of this whole gender equality, you know, thing going on, but are we, in fact, like you said, we're built differently. And mm -hmm. in fact, you know, there are some differences that should be respected in whichever mm -hmm. field you work in. I mean, Joyce, you're mm -hmm. in, in singing, but maybe that doesn't really affect you so much, but there are different strengths, right? There are, but I, mm -hmm. I think in every situation you need a well-rounded team yeah. where there's the strength and the brains and the mechanical th brain and there's all these different aspects within mm -hmm. the team to, mm -hmm. to help take yeah. care of the situation whether it's to rescue somebody or mm -hmm. to fight a fire or to mitigate an emergency I mean I'm sure it's the same thing with with you know s singing and a, a band and stuff we all have our different parts of the team yeah oh, definitely like when we work on our projects right. our music projects it's yeah. like okay we're the creative team right and then we have to have someone with the finance and right. then the, the marketing and so we have to work together to you know to make it work the whole project right but do you think in Asia the concept of strength is different so a woman really may not necessarily use her physical strength because that's just not something that mm -hmm. You so know, you find someone who's physically <laughs> <laughs> strong, right? And Having then, said that, recently there's been a, a female police officer. I mm -hmm. think she used to be a singer or something. I don't know if you saw in the news. No. So that was like big news. It's like, whoa, she's a policeman? You know, it's mm -hmm. like, it's still so gender different. Yeah. It, it is. It is. Uh, I don't know. I, I think back in the day it was all about finances and stuff, who, and women stayed at home more, right? And now if, it's like women really need to bring home money so so we have to choose a job that might you know you, you want to make equal money mm -hmm. also so men's jobs tend to pay you a little more do you think mm -hmm. you have to choose between staying at home or having a career can you have both you know that stupid ultimate woman's question can you have it all um i think so but i think as women, we want to raise our own kids too we want to mm. be their influence in in those formative years so we we um, sacrifice possibly the the uh, m maybe a decade of our life, depending on how old our kids are, mm -hmm. to be there for them during the younger times and just to prepare them, yeah. you know, for adulthood. Joyce, you're pretty good at yeah. juggling your career and your kids, right? Yeah. Well, because of my job, it's uh, more flexible. Like as a you know firefighter, I'm sure you have times you have to be yeah. at work, right? Mm -hmm. And so for my work, it's I I mean it could be very demanding if, if you're promoting an album right then you have to be doing uh, makeup and hair f preparing for interviews and music videos and it takes a lot of time so you have to really delegate the time really well mm -hmm. okay this time is for family and then you have to probably cancel some things that well, you can't I was going to ask have either of you I'm sure you've had times when you had to sacrifice for your career you know 
at the price of neglecting your kids or doing something really bad or mm. forgetting something. Yeah, well for me, I've been lucky because I did my career when I was younger and I got married later in my life. So I ah. kind of like did like what I needed to do for my career. And then right. now I can just That's concentrate on my family. So right. I didn't plan it that way, but it worked out. But you out. would suggest that to like, you know, women out there to get things out before you have kids? Yeah, I, I like you know, doing your career at the beginning when How you have most you had kids because you my, my young. first was at 21, so I was right in, in the middle of college. Mm -hmm. I right. actually brought him to classes with me. Wow. Oh, cool! Yeah. <laughs> And how did that affect your studies? Um, you like breastfeeding while you're like listening to the, the teacher? Almost, <laughs> almost. I remember one class, one, my, one of my girlfriends, she was outside holding my son who was just, I don't know, less than a month and I was taking an exam. I could hear him crying. Wow. Mm -hmm. But you know, Hard you to do, focus. Huh? Yeah, you just do that. And um, I, I, I remember just buying him like a donut and milk and saying, can, <laughs> Here, you sit, <laughs> yes, can you sit there quietly while I'm going into class? And my, my yeah. teachers back in, and this is in the 80s, right. they, they were, the teachers I had were flexible and allowed me to do that. Mm. But my, my promise was, okay, after school, we go to the beach, you know, because mm. okay, college is only a few hours, right? Mm. But it didn't stop you from continuing your education. No. no. Yeah. Right? That, yeah. That's pretty impressive. It is. It's hard. That's yeah. multitasking, you know? Right. Most people choose one or the other. So what about the inner strength? How do you develop inner strength? I mean, how do you both think that you got to where you are today? It's not, I mean, physical training, you can, you can paddle, you can work out, you can do whatever, but the inner strength, where does it come from? I think, I think you really have to believe in yourself that you can do it, right? Like, it's like, oh, I can't do this, I can't, you have to confidence. believe. Confidence. Right, I think it's, um, sometimes, I, I learned this in high school was, I felt like I was really shy, and what I did was, I, I pretended I wasn't. And so what you do is you pretend you're stronger and then you become stronger. You, mm. you know, it's part of just believing in yourself, but just you know, if you don't really believe it, you just do it and then eventually you become, you, you become exactly. Is mm. there a point where it's over strong and it's, it intimidates like potential dates? You know, I, do you I, go through I, that? Yeah. <laughs> Even as a famous yeah. person, people are like, oh, well, I don't know if I can date her, you know, Yeah, right? definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think so. I'm single, so maybe, but... <laughs> what? No, I think... So you I think, think people, that, I that think, has a I big think, toll I, on And us. I don't know if it's my personality, because I've done my career for so long, and that I've become what pe people think is a stronger person. But for, for me, um, I, I think if... I try not to tell someone what I do for a living mm -hmm. until they get to wow. know me. Mm -hmm. That's... Is this, it, does That's it seem very like intimidating your job? Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure. Don't don't you? Wouldn't you rather have somebody like like you for you before you tell them that you're, you know, yeah. a, a singer and an accomplished singer? You know, it's the same thing yeah. as any mm -hmm. job. I think if you're yeah. a little more accomplished, you want them to know you first. Yeah. But that you brought up an interesting point. You know, strong women. There is a part, the sensitivity, where you don't want it to be the, the main thing on the table. We're going to take a quick break, and uh, when we come back, we'll continue talking about the concept of strength in a woman and where does it come from. We'll be back. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We are uh, here live on Mondays at 3 p.m. and we bring guests like our best health coach, Elena Maganto. Uh, eat well and follow her tips. Viva la comida saludable. Aloha. We invite you to join us on our Keys to Success show, which is live on the Thick Tech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. My name is Danilia. D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Our goal for Keys to Success is to provide a platform for professional and personal development tools and profound insights on how to achieve success in life, career and or business. We have incredible guests from all walks of life, including politicians, successful business owners, leaders, entrepreneurs and authors. As this is a live show, there are live mess ups as well, which are fun to watch. Aloha and we'll see you on Thursday. All right, we're back on Quack Talk. I'm Crystal talking to Joyce Lee and Richie Kelts on the concept of strength. These two humble women, I mean, it's pathetic. I'm trying to get them to like show us how amazing they are. And they're like, oh, no, I don't want to talk about this. Don't tell them I'm captain. You know, I'm, I'm just a singer. And these guys are like, you know, top of their game. So again, is that something Hawaiian or Asian that you, you know you, you bring down, you're, you're more humble about your accomplishments? Or you were saying before the break that you don't want to, um, 
mislead people too, and you don't want people to judge you just because of your career. They want to see you as a person. Mm. Yeah, I. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, definitely. As a singer, you know, people would see me, okay, I'm always on TV. Right. And then in the press. And then men would be afraid. Oh, you know, I don't want to be taking pictures with you. I really? don't want people to see me or whatever. Or they'll be like, oh, you know, oh, she might make a lot of money, you know. Oh, or, yeah. That's and intimidating. I don't make enough money. I, I can't buy her nice stuff or whatever. So, yeah, it does um, affect, like, uh, if you're trying to find a boyfriend or a husband, that it will affect it, you know, how huh. they see you. So you think you've lost some potential dates because of who you are? Yeah, but actually, I think it's a good thing, though, because... Can we talk about how you met your husband? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my husband was actually in the audience um, watching me sing at my concert. Um, and I, I give him a lot of credit because he wasn't afraid to get to know me. and But he waited like two years. Wow. He never got a chance to meet me until two years later. He's like later. spying on you? Like <laughs> <laughs> and when he did see me, you know, he just walked up to me and said, Hi, you know, I really like your music and, you know, I'd like to buy your CD and all that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's just one of those guys, right, you know. Right, I'm like, yeah, right. I just got a, you know, record oh, store. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but he kept on pursuing me and I thought that was... a. a, a he was tr strong. Right. He wasn't afraid to approach me. So I thought he asked for like singing lessons. Wasn't that his voice? Yeah, yeah. He, and then um, I was Sneaking teaching singing. Huh? That that's a good way. Yeah, I was teaching singing. <laughs> it worked, I'm sure. And then I was like, okay. So I taught him like a month of singing. Right. But after each lesson, it was about 7.30. And he'd be like, oh, it's time for dinner. Would you, you know, have <laughs> oh. dinner with me? I'm like, okay, <laughs> why not? And so we got to know each other. And right. then, yeah, we started dating. Oh, that's a yeah. That's a good way. Well, let's talk about the concept of the voice. Because voice, I mean, Joyce, you have a, a singing voice. You have a beautiful voice. I don't know if you want to belt something out. But, <laughs> you know, the concept of having an inner voice. Um, mm -hmm. Like, Asian women tend to not voice their opinions. Maybe it's cultural. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's personality. But mm -hmm. how do you think, you know, a strong woman uses that voice? Because there's an abuse of it, too. I think in American culture, there's an over loud voice, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. do you guys think about that? I I tend to not have that over loud voice un until I feel almost at my breaking point. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know if you know I, I I just let things happen and then if I get then if I get really mad then then I use my oh. loud voice. <laughs> They're like oh no I shouldn't have dated the fire. <laughs> <laughs> well I think it's personality or I might have just learned that from you know my parents. Or have something. you ever hit anyone? Um, <laughs> That's really a stupid question. No, I, I think I punched my brother once <laughs> when he was like, he was like doing that too much, you know, oh. when you, I don't know. Yeah. I punched my brother once, but no, I'm not a, a oh, I, I, I hit someone once. Oh, yeah. oh now it's it comes out. Yeah, when they threw a cigarette at me, but not, I'm not a, no, that might, that's like twice. And, I'm, I'm 56, so I, I think I'm allowed to hit twice. <laughs> See, don't mess with this woman. <laughs> have, you, have you hit someone before? Um, Other than a... Really? No? Okay. You said you were bullied in school in a funny way. I, I was, like, because I grew up in Canada, in Toronto, um, in, in the suburbs. Right. And so there was a very... There was only maybe two Asian people in my school. And so, yeah, I would be bullied and... and but I was a really fast runner, and so okay, see, they would run after me, say, "I'm gonna beat you up," you know. And, and you know, I I wasn't strong enough to beat them up, so but uh -huh. I just ran. And <laughs> so you found the strength in whatever you did well. Yeah. yeah. Do you think your parents, your mothers, affected who you are today? Yeah, I think so, definitely. Yeah, I I think so. Sometimes you you emulate th their strengths and you, you might not do something that you didn't like. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, you yeah. adjust it. You, yes, yeah. definitely. It affects me. Yeah, or or but conversely, how do you um, educate your children to see strength in a woman? You have three boys. You have how many boys and girls? Um, I have three boys and four girls. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's you always lead by example. I think mm -hmm. if, if um, they see that if you want to do something and you pursue what you, you want to do, you pursue your goal and they see that as a strength and then mm -hmm. then they realize that they have nothing stopping yeah, their potential. Right. Definitely like um, exactly what you do, like how you respect other men or women and, and they will see and they'll learn. Yeah, also, yeah. yeah. 
In fact, I think, Richie, you, one of your daughters is in the Air Force, right? Yes, she was in the Air Force, and then she got out. Right. So now she's in the Air National Guard. Right. But she, I, I believe she might have done a complete eight years, and possibly up to four deployments in, to the Middle East. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she worked security forces. Right. See, again, that's is, another amazing thing. That is really thing. strong, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe she was affected by you also. Yeah, for inspired. sure, right? Yeah, I, th yeah. I think so. I think her, her, her uh, high school years when she got into trouble a few times, and I think she realized that, that she could go the other direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you guys had something to say to younger women out there or men who, who have, have, you know, female partners as they do, you know, what is the way to develop that strength, that inner and outer strength? I think, well, not to be afraid to be wrong, to do wrong things. Sometimes it's, you go through, uh, you know, uh, something, a mistake or whatever, and then you learn it and you become stronger. Right, don't do be afraid to make mistakes. Do you have an example? Like, what's the I worst so. thing you've done? Or you can't tell us. <laughs> the worst thing. <laughs> no, I mean, like, through, when I grew up, you know, I, I, I was really taking good care of by my mother. I was a really sheltered child, ah, okay, right? So. And so I was just kind of didn't have my own thinking or whatever. So I, at a certain age, I was like, okay, I'm, I have to get out of that mode and just like meet people or do things that could be wrong, but not wrong, but like um, just risky. Yeah. Risky. And, then, um, and then learn from it and then you become stronger, I think. So be a risk taker. Risk taker, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's a good one, risk taker. Mm-hmm. I, I grew up where my sister was six years younger than me, and I remember um, basically taking care of her with not as much adult supervision as I should have had. My dad was in the Army, so he was busy, oh, okay. you know, whatever, you know, deployments or whatever they did back in those days. And, and I just remember supervising my sister at a young age. So I, I think I got a lot of strength from being responsible younger. So I tend to raise my kids t to be responsible also mm -hmm. because, um, when, because then they own their own actions. If they're not responsible and then you own their, mm -hmm. their mistakes, then yeah. they're not really learning. Yeah, exactly. But you need to make your mistakes, right? You still have to make the, you, you know, the, the better, the more mistakes you make, you, you remember those. That's right. If you don't make mistakes, you kind of forget the route. You, yes. you remember more with mm. your mistakes. Yeah. But what about culturally differences? Do you think that that's something that we need to take in consideration of how a woman does grow up? Like, oh, I'm in an environment where women aren't encouraged to speak out in public, so I should stay passive. Do we fight against those boundaries, or uh, do we respect what we grew up with, our religions, our families, and then even if you don't agree with it, you know, just going mm. forward, how, how do we approach like the whole concept of finding your own voice and strength? I, I, I think that if you, if you have too much of a voice, people don't listen, mm. especially to women. But I think nowadays it might be men too, like our, our politicians right now. Ugh. If you're too strong of a woman, then they Mm -hmm. They call you bad names. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Big B word. So you have yeah. to, I think you have to be able to balance it, but um, mm -hmm. it, it depends on who's, who's watching and who's judging on how assertive they, they, they are, they believe mm -hmm. you are. Do you find that? I think so. You have to be flexible to see exactly yeah. who your audience is and to be assertive at times and, and then, then pull, then back pull back at times. Yeah. Right, yes, right. It's, a, it's a big balancing act it's mm -hmm. a it's a little a game so if you were a guy would you date yourself oh my God. <laughs> of course <laughs> I'm the best thing ever <laughs> <laughs> or, or what we, what type of woman would you be attracted to maybe put it that way I think you if I was a guy <laughs> that's really or, or tough because because <laughs> as a female I think we choose different types of and for me to I don't know. I don't, I, it's just that, that's an odd question. <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying to put yourself in somebody's shoes right. to look back at yourself. Or, okay, make okay. it simple. Okay, go ahead. I, I, think, um, I think men nowadays actually kind of like a little bit more of an independent woman because right. then they don't have to be at the weak woman's beck and call all the time because mm. they, t they take care of their own things. Mm. Like, 
I don't know, you know, when you make that phone call, I, I have a flat tire or whatever, mm -hmm. you, if, if you take care of your flat tire, your man doesn't have to go do it, but then they like to do it also, so you right. have to mm -hmm. call them enough, but <laughs> right. not be too needy. I don't know, I don't know. My female friends who are a little more needy, I think they end up having Mm -hmm. more male relationships because men like to be the caretakers too. It's like that, you know, I've been seeing the trailer in the Consolidated Theater where there's this older couple who've been working and yes, have you seen it? Yes, that's such a cute, that's such a And the last thing is the guy says, I wear the pants in the family. But the last comment is the wife saying, I tell him which pants to wear. <laughs> so it's yes. really oh, interesting really? where, you know, the power plays. Yeah, yeah. And it's quite yeah. sweet. Yeah, well, yeah. go ahead. Oh no, I was going to say my husband actually purposely, he liked me because I was independent, my own. I okay. can make my own money and I can take care of myself and so he liked that actually. So yeah, it depends on what type of men. Yeah. Um, and then you will attract that type of men, you know. But you do want to be, you know, self-sufficient, risk takers and, and what else did we say, you know? Um. What, what are the strong characters that, that we want to take away with us today? What are some elements that we should, you know, tell the younger kids nowadays what to kind of look for? I, I think um, we should allow everyone to be themselves. Okay. And if, they, if their strengths are to be strong and go-getters, that's yeah. good. And if, they're, if their strengths are to be more nurturing, let them. Because yeah, right. we, we still need everybody like that mm. to, to balance our world. Exactly. I think totally. Yeah. Because everyone has different yeah, strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. and, and with people like you guys, I mean, there's always bigger things ahead, right? I mean, you're, you know, I can't, you were paddling when I talked to you last time. So you're like constantly yeah. on the go, pushing yourselves further and further, which is amazing. Joyce, I believe you're setting up for a concert next year in Hawaii, right? Yeah. We're like um, trying to bring in together like organizers and venues and Yay. it'll be really be exciting. There. Yeah, yeah. Be there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some canto pop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do things in English and Chinese is yeah, pretty nice. Yeah, to bring thing. in uh, the Chinese community or even, you know, uh, other cultures of people to come. Yeah. yeah. Well, good luck with that and I yeah. hope people can look out for Joyce's concert <laughs> and Richie, good luck with the rest of your career and your family and everything else that comes with Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you both of you and I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, we'll talk to you again next Tuesday. Be strong.